Brock Lesnar, ultimate cage fighter and former world champion, now faces a new challenger. I'm Gordy Cron, and I'm 165 pounds of lean, mean hunting machine. Gordy Cron is facing off against Brock Lesnar. Well, sort of. Gordy and Brock are hunting together with Trophy Hunters Alberta. They are in southern Canada, both chasing monster mule deer. Brock Lesnar, big bucks, big trucks, and T-bone steaks. You know, Brock Lesnar is obviously larger than life, and you know, I'd met him casually over the years at some of the sports shows and everything, but I've never had a chance until now to really share a camp with him and get to know the guy. It, it was really good to see Brock in that kind of a setting. Um, we were staying basically just at a farmhouse in rural um, Alberta. And a lot of people don't know that Brock is a farm boy. He's from South Dakota, grew up on a farm, and he was just so at home in this atmosphere. And he's not some super rock star that everybody probably thinks he is. He's really kind of just a down-home boy. A down-home boy that's thrown down a challenge. For some reason, he kept calling me Krusty Kron. I don't know where that came from. I had a few little pet names for Brock, too, but I can't really say them on, uh, on camera right now. In fact, Brock bet me a dinner that he would shoot the first buck. I mean, it's game on from there on. That was the wager between Krusty Kron and Brock Lesnar. From the time the guys landed in Alberta, the weather's steadily gone downhill. The drive to the ranch took two hours longer than expected. You know, hunting Alberta in November, I didn't expect 70 and sunny, but I didn't expect this either. We kind of got handed a, a card we weren't expecting when uh, Mother Nature had handed us our first snowstorm and blizzard of the year, so. You know, going up there, we had intended to hunt together, Brock and I, but you know, with the weather conditions as they were, uh, the guys just thought we'd have a lot better chance if we split up, each one our separate ways, and we could cover more ground. So that's what we did. First morning of the hunt, it's cold and the wind is blowing. Well, today the big boy's going down for sure. Um, the big slob is uh, going to get located. I hear you say the big boy's going down. <laughs> I'm, not going I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. As soon as I saw the, uh, the blizzard, the snow, the wind we were going to have to deal with, I thought, you know, it just might not happen. We might have to settle. But that wasn't my plan going in. I wanted to shoot a big buck, and I wanted to shoot a buck larger than the one that Brock got. The first day out, we hunted in the yeah, same vicinity because we wanted the trucks close together just in case we got in trouble out there. I mean, the wind was blowing, it was snowing, it was nasty out there. And we really got a taste of what it was going to be like that first day. <laughs> I'm well, ready to get in the truck. <laughs> yeah, it's cold, but at least it's windy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was not a truck hunt. We were out on foot all day, and the snow was deep. I mean, it's that kind of snow that just drags at your legs. It was tough going. And we saw some deer, but they were really hunkered down. We got in pretty close, jumped him up, but he wasn't the guy we were looking for. And Brock and gang had pretty much the same luck. They saw a few deer, but you know nothing they wanted to shoot at. We had a good encounter, uh, a nice three by three. I probably should have taken him. How far? Less than 100 yards. We watched him. We sat, we sat and watched for an hour. And uh, now I wish I would have pulled the trigger. I don't know if they were going to get more snow or what's going to happen here. So it's, it's ugly out there. I was unsure if we were even going to stay out and hunt in, the, in, the, in those conditions, but I was really surprised to see that, that Gordy, that uh, old crusty Cron was still out in them conditions. So I knew that I had to, 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 to knuckle down and, and, and stay out there because and, and, uh, we, we had a wager going and uh, I sure as heck wasn't going to buy, uh, buy him dinner. Well, on day two, conditions were, I mean, it basically gone from bad to worse. It was blowing, I bet you 35 miles an hour. But we got out there, Ryland wanted to get in and get close to the Milk River. Um, there's some bluffs along the river where you can get up high and you can do a lot of glassing. Immediately, we saw some deer milling down below us, and there was actually a couple of pretty good bucks that we watched for a long time. I'm passing up a steak dinner right there. I gotta think Brock would be letting the lead fly right about now. 
<laughs> he likes his steak. You know, it was really a tough situation because there was the river and it was that time of year when it wasn't open and it wasn't frozen. It was just a dangerous time of year to be trying to cross the river. And that's what Ryland was really hoping to do. We wanted to be able to work both sides of the river, but that just wasn't going to happen. So we just sat out on the hill for a long time, did a couple small hikes, and then we saw the guy we wanted. Well, we finally saw a shooter buck, but <laughs> he's on the other side of the river, so we need to make a plan for the morning. We either got to try to get across the river, or we got to come in from the other side, but it's going to be a long walk in on him. And, you know, who knows where he'll be tomorrow, but we saw other deer on the other side of the river. Grass is always greener on the other side of the river. Uh, wow. The baddest man on the planet is with Gordy Cron in southern Alberta. They're chasing big mule deer in the harsh weather conditions near the Milk River. So far, the only thing that's down is the temperature. No deer yet. Little guy. If nothing else, I'm going to get the toboggan out of the back of the <laughs> truck here and go sledding. You going to pull me around? <laughs> <laughs> I could use a lot. It may have been a joke All at right. the time, but the next morning, that sled would become a big part of Gordy's hunt. Well, we saw that big deer cross the river yesterday, so we just want to be prepared. We're going to get back up on that mound where we were glassing yesterday, and if we see him on the other side of the river, we're going to try to use the sled and somehow get across the river. There's two good bucks down here. On the way in, we jump a buck with, a, with two or three does, and he gets off to our left and goes up into a cut. And we got a pretty good look at him, and you know, he was a decent buck. He wasn't as big as the one across the river, but at this point, you know, you know, a bird in the hand, bird in the bush, in this case, a buck on our side of the river or little blue toboggan across the river. And, you know, we wanted to give the big guy one more chance. So before we committed to going after that buck, we climbed back up on top of the bluff and blasted it. And, you know, we never did locate him. You know, what was really nagging at me was that we need to get after this buck. This is our guy now. Forget going across the river, which I wasn't really keen on anyhow. We're going after this buck. So we bailed out of there. So we get around the other side and we get into position. And we're pretty sure we know where this buck is. There's some nice cuts in the terrain. And we figured that they've dropped down into one of them. So we start working, start looking around. And I mean, half an hour goes by and there's no deer. This is like six deer and they just disappeared. And so we're kind of figuring, what, what are we gonna do? Did they just bail out of here? Should we go back and try to get on another deer? And we were just kind of wandering around, doing a little bit of glass and then all of a sudden, they hear, psst, psst, Gordon. And I look over and I can see Ryland's on something. So I hurried over there and got on the sticks as quick as I could. And, and Ryland said he'd seen a doe and a spike buck, but he was pretty sure this is the group that we'd seen and that big buck was down in there. And sure enough, about the time he said that, there he is, he's right down in the bottom. I saw the big guy come up out of the bottom. But, you know, hunting with a camera always has its problems. My cameraman was on the tripod, but he was a little bit lower than me. And even though I could see the buck, had him in my crosshairs, he didn't have the shot, so I had to wait. And it was probably the longest five or six seconds of my life as this buck came up out of the draw and started up the hill, probably, I'm guessing he was 200, 225 yards away. He stopped, he looked back, and bam, he was down. Good shot. Woo <laughs> What a gift. That. I'd given up on him. You know what? We worked for every inch of that deer. I know, I know. We, we worked hard for him. You know, that buck, there was a lot of satisfaction in shooting that buck. I mean, we had worked our butts off for three days out there. I don't know if I wanted to face another day out there. They are so big in the body and they're so dark. Their horns are dark. Yeah. They're just a beautiful animal. He's a nice looking deer. Oh, he is. Good going. On the other side of the ranch, Brock Lesnar also gets his muley. The debate on who shot first rages on. But Gordy thinks he got him by a few minutes. <laughs> 338 Federal. Fusion. Let it loose. 
Yes. With each tag filled, the work begins. With incredible strength, Brock Lesnar shows his way of taking a big mule deer out of the bottom of these coolies. Well, yeah, I could have done that too, but we had the little blue sled, so why not use it? So we humped it out of there. We worked like a couple of mules. We got our deer out. You know, maybe not as flashy as Brock, but we got the job done. Where's Lesnar when you need him? Yeah. <laughs> Hunts are about the total experience. I mean, I'll remember that mule deer buck for a long time, but what I'll really remember is the conditions, the tough hunting, the blizzard, the hiking, all the drama that went into the hunt. And I'll remember hunting with Brock Lesnar for a long time. Hey Brock, I got the first deer, and I'm still thinking mine was bigger. And by the way, I'm still waiting on that dinner. October is a great time to be in the Rocky Mountains for many reasons, but the real reason, of course, elk hunting. And Colorado's high country is where you need to be then because those bulls, they generally tend to be high yet before the snows push them down. And that's where we're at on this hunt. We're up high, we're at almost 10,000 feet trying to find a bull. And these bulls, believe it or not, we're still doing a little bit of talking, bugling off and on just enough to give away their location. And anytime I can take a hint like that and work into a bull, I'm on it. You know, and what I love about the, the camera work here is it truly gives you a perspective of how far away that elk is. Sometimes, if you want to take a bull like this, you need to reach out there. Well, and we've been calling to this bull as well to get him to spark off and tell us where he was at. So when he come out on this meadow, he's looking for other elk. And that kind of was a bad thing because we're on a fairly open hill and he can glance that hill over real easily and he wasn't seeing what he wanted to see so he was staying well out there in the middle of that meadow and this right here tells the tale. I've got a long, long shot if I want to take that bull in a narrow window to get it done in there. Obviously you know the rifle, you're using an ammunition that's designed for an elk, particularly using a 300 wind mag. So, I mean, if it's a bull that you like and it, it's one of those situations where you feel comfortable with, by all means, take him. You know, it makes a bull like this, though, makes me feel like a hypocrite because we sit here and talk about judging whitetails and how big the racks are and is it a mature deer and all these different things. So it's like, yeah, I want this bull, so uh, <laughs> there's no question there, but elk get a lot bigger than that. But if you're, particularly if you're on a public land elk hunt and you get a shot at a bull like this, you better be taking it. Well, that's one of the questions we had when we were at the Zook cabin at the Eastern Sports Show in Harrisburg, you know, recently. This uh, gal come up and asked us. So how do you know the difference? And that's a good size. And that is a big, big dilemma for people, especially if you're only used to hunting whitetails. And I, I think, Bill, you kind of hit it on the nail on the head there. It kind of depends on where you're at. In most public areas, public land hunts, I'd shoot this bull in a heartbeat. But if I drew a premium tags, you might have the opportunity to truly hunt some good public land area that's limited for the number of hunters that are in there and manage for 300 and up class bulls. I'll tell you what, I like elk steak to begin with. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that I think this one might be a little bit easier to pack out than some of those blasted <laughs> things I've packed out of mountains. So, I'd have already been shooting at this one in this particular instance. Well, I'll be honest, on this setup right here, I let this bull walk. And I hunted this place for almost a dozen years now. So I knew the quality there, and I just felt we could get on a six-point bull with a couple more days of hunting. And so we watched this bull go off on his own, and, and those elk steaks walked away. <laughs>